Welcome everyone. It's uh, Thursday, June 20th, uh, the Brookfield Select Board meeting. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, a couple announcements. Uh, this meeting is being recorded. It is all now uh, officially live on cable on channel 194, so we are live. Uh, also want to make an announcement that the fire department has been awarded a $3,600 grant uh, for SAFE, the student awareness of fire education, and $1,800 for the senior SAFE program for FY24. And uh, signed warrants. Sure. Uh, signed warrants or fiscal year 24 warrant 25 accounts payable of 84630.66 and warrant 25 payroll for $210,522.66. Uh, now, onto the agenda. Do we want to? Well, we should probably take some of these items out of order for time's sake. Um, I suggest that we take, uh, sign the grant of easement for 147A Lake Road first as a joint meeting with the Board of Health sure. so that we can they all sign it. Their meeting. Are you guys ready to go? Yeah. Open the joint meeting? Yep. At 702. All right. Does anyone have any questions about it or are we all good to sign? <laughs> this is easement for a sewer so we can close on a piece of real estate or install a septic, a, septic a septic system so they can sell a piece of real estate. Yeah, it was discussed yeah. at the town meeting and right. it on, so I think there's really nothing to discuss. Right. Yep. Yeah. Make a motion. I make a motion that we, can I see the easement? Yeah. I make a motion that we sign the easement for parcel 147A for the purpose of installing a septic system on Lake Road in Brookfield, Massachusetts. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, I gotta sign it. Okay. And then Mike Siri's coming in to notarize it. Okay. And I think you all have to take a separate vote for it to be. Yeah, I was gonna say. All right, so is there a motion to the board of health to approve the easement? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, and does it look like, do all three of you have to sign this? Uh, yes, we all have to yeah. sign it. All right. is a notary if we want him to uh, oh should have thought of that mike series on his way huh <laughs> um oh also anyone else recording mr lee back anyone else uh, we, have, um, we only have two pages Do you have things now, or? Yeah. Are you? Are you? Or he says he's on his way. Yeah. 
Do you know if uh, we're going to need copies of this and give this to him tonight? Was that the intention? Ye uh, yes, they would like to. Okay. I mean, they're supposed to be here. Um, so He's I here. Oh, okay, yeah. perfect. <laughs> You want this tonight, right? You want this tonight? Yep. Yep. Perfect. It's probably in. Yep, it's fine. Right on cue. You're just waiting for the big entrance. <laughs> And then do you want to make copies and yeah, I can do all that. Okay. Do we want to move on? want to take uh, the treasurer out of order? Yeah, let's take the treasurer out yeah. of order. And, and honestly, we have on the agenda that I'm speaking to the employee training, and I already spoke to that, and there were some significant issues with it. I don't know that we've resolved any of them. So let's talk to the treasurer first about the position. Okay. Yeah. And, and actually, tr with regards to that, I did speak with, with Holly earlier yeah, today, so and she said she's all set. Okay. Yeah, she's got I guess, all her paperwork in, in order, so I she's ready to go. Pretty much verbatim so what she said. To, yeah, so then you can, if we want to talk about that issue, you can talk about that issue because you have information I don't have. Okay. So, thank you. So, who wants to start? Let's, well, let's start with sharing. Good yes, evening, sharing. Sharing. Hi. Thank you for coming. Thanks how for reminding you? me. Good, how are you? So, we're talking about the permanent position for the treasurer. Mm -hmm. I think we're. So yeah, I was going to say I could kind of kick it off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, As you know, Sharon currently right now is the interim treasurer. She's been with us uh, a couple months plus. Uh, I think by all accounts, uh, certainly from what I've seen and from what I've heard from town accountants and other pertinent uh, town officials, she's done an outstanding job taking over for the uh, her predecessor. And at this point, obviously, we have an opening for a full-time position. Sharon is interested, and um, she would she's very anxious to take the position. From my standpoint, personally, I, I think she'd be a tremendous addition as a permanent treasurer to the town of Brookfield. Okay, so now at town meeting, we did. What did we cut the hours to? Like was 30, it 28, I think 30 it was or 32. 20? Yeah, somewhere in that area, with a budgeted amount of approximately 62,000. Okay. Right. So she was suggesting taking all that budget, and if you took, when I did some quick math, if you took uh, Amy's wage, hourly wage, and multiplied it by 32, it's roughly. And, and 32 is okay, is certainly adequate for yeah, you Yeah, yeah. Do you want to speak to that with the? To the hour, I'm yeah, sorry. I, I, I know, you probably. <laughs> I, I have a question. So. What, are we making it an hourly position, or are we salary. tasking Sharon with the, the salary position? So, so one of the challenges is, and, and it's something we've run into previously, is that if a position is booked at any book kept at anything less than forty hours, it, it probably by all rights should be designated as an hourly position, by virtue of the fact that there's a perception. And, and this is something we can talk about and, and potentially just put out on the table. The perception is if you make something salary, but it's only for say 32 hours, it can be looked upon by external agencies 
that you're just trying to avoid paying overtime, right? So if you say, hey, your salary, but your salary only covers 32 hours, there can be a perception that from a like human resources and employee relations perspective that you're functionally setting the person up to have to work more than 32 hours and not pay them the 32 hours, right? So okay. now the flip side of it is, is that if you've got a position like treasurer where in some periods of time, there may, she might only need 22 hours, but she's taking the position expecting it to, you know, and, and I don't know if you would be planning on keeping your role down in, is it Holland that you're with? Mm -hmm. or, or not, and was and is going to be giving up another position in order to take it to not guarantee at least the 32 hours of pay is a different way of taking advantage of somebody. So I think that's a discussion that we actually like need to have as part of this, you know, because I'm agnostic. We, it could be 30, we could put it at a salary as if it was the 32 hours a week, understanding that sometimes that might be more hours and sometimes that might be less, and the town is just paying functionally for treasury services, and that's cool. And so long as everybody's cool with it, that's fine. But we want to get it on the record that the intent is, you know, for the benefit of both the town and the employee to standardize what the pay is, regardless of the hours worked or we need to determine it needs to transition to an hourly position. But when it's when your salary for less than 40 hours, it does put you in a kind of neither fish nor fowl spot, okay. basically. So I am good with the salary position. I've had a couple conversations with Sharon. I'm good with the salary position. It's certainly less than... What we were paying? Yes, exactly. Yep. Yeah, and, and, and speaking to her, She's brought us forward on a lot of issues that were a problem before, or, or maybe not necessarily a problem, but we're in a better spot with percentage-wise what we're getting for the fees that are being held. Uh, we're going computerized on a lot of the. I, I'm going to let Sharon speak to to some of the things that change. Yeah, because she, she can probably made. she can probably yeah. say it in a more educated yeah. manner than yeah. you're about to. Perfect. So let's <laughs> let her talk. Yeah. So, go ahead. Um, so uh, just as touching on the salary piece, I have never been hourly in this position and I, um, I've never worked for, uh, my hours were never up to a 40 hour work week. So I don't think we'll run into any issues there. Great. Um, so uh, I appreciate Rich um, speaking for me. So I, what he was conveying, um, I've, I've bumped up our interest rates on our um, bank, bank accounts. So one of our bank accounts was 2.2%. We got that bumped up to 4%. Another bank account was 1.35, and that's now 4.25. And these are not our trust funds or stabilization accounts. These are our money market accounts. So uh, that's what Rich was speaking to. Um, another thing that I've done is add positive pay to our payroll and vendor bank accounts. Um, Positive pay is a way to um, verify checks that are being cashed at our banks. Uh, so for every check that is cashed, it, it gets verified by a text file that I send. And, and if there's any issues at all, they send me an email and I need to go in before noon, verify that the check can be cashed or not cashed. Uh, so that's just another way that we're being protective against fraud. Uh, we've also added ACH blocks on all our accounts. So we give the bank a list of our um, any ACHs that we may be sending or receiving, and if the vendors aren't on that list, they can, the funds would not be processed. Um, and um, in the future, we'll be moving more towards a paperless payroll processing, um, and so that has added benefits for the employees as well. Um, they'll be able to track their own PTO, they'll be able to go in and print their pay stubs, they will be able to go in and change any personal information or uh, banking information, taxes, anything like that will be in this portal as well. So those are the, some of the things we'll move towards in the future. Great. No. Sorry? Okay. So, do you have any other questions for Sharon or do you want, I'm, I'm good to move forward and I know we have a lot of the agenda, so do you? I'm fine. I make a motion that we appoint uh, 
Sharon. struggling with your last name. Ashley. Ashley. Sharon Ashley as a full-time town treasurer. Second. Uh, any discussion? All no. in favor? Aye. 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 Welcome thank forward. you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you for all your hard work. Yes, thank you. I know. He just tried to play with it. <laughs> Can you turn that up? Try to speak Wait, louder. Voice? Yeah. Can you turn the speaker up? Oh, there's a speaker here. We can try to turn it on. Okay, is this any clearer? Is this any clearer? Do we want to take uh, Dennis here? Yeah. Sure. All right. Come on up. So I know at the budget meeting, when we were going through the budgets and we were talking about the tree removal, there were questions on the bidding process. And at that point, I threw it on the agenda. And here we are. bring copies for you all of uh, the invitation to, to bid that we used last year. Tried to update it with the dates and also a copy of the contract that we used last year. I think just one of the in your left hand. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. respect to you Dennis and I know I know Rich you were looking to get this information but fundamentally isn't this treated like all of our procurement like if we expect it to be in a certain band that there's certain procedures we need to follow yeah Massachusetts general law uh, 149 governs governs the bidding process and uh, it's my understanding that the it's also a dollar amount based. So if it's under ten thousand dollars, you can just use general business practices. Ron will probably speak to this better than I could. But from ten to twenty-five thousand dollars, you need three quotes, and you need to have a public notification. And anything greater than twenty-five thousand dollars, you have to publicly advertise it and have a public bid opening. And that's that's what we did last year. We did a, a sealed bid. It was it was publicly announced. We got a minimum of three, we got four quotes actually, and we did do the, the public uh, reading of the sealed bids. I, I read them to Kelly because we were the only ones there. <laughs> <laughs> but we did do it, follow the procedure to do that. Okay. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I believe that the price we wound up getting was similar to what we had had in the past only yes. in order to get the, that price in the past we'd had to supply the highway labor for uh, some of the work um so in the, from my understanding in the past they did use the highway labor last year we did not we had the contractor do everything he provided his equipment and crew and we didn't use the highway department yeah and it was actually it was less money than the prior contract What was the prior contract? Because I'm not aware of that. I, I believe it was uh, $1,950 a day. I, I'm going from memory. But it was 1950 a day, and they used the highway department. Our current contract is $1,800 a day, and he provides all the labor and equipment. Perfect. And he also disposes of the waste material, which I guess in the past uh, the town took care of the waste material. So do we do any stump grinding? Because I see that. I, I haven't yet. I put it in there just in case. 
just in case, like, I don't know if there's something in front of City Hall or something. I just wanted sure. the okay. availability if we decided we needed to grind a stone. Okay. So I had a short discussion before the meeting opened. Uh, the one, one way I thought the town would really get a lot more bang for its buck is to group trees together and bid on one through 50 and then 51 to 100. And speaking with, with the tree warden, he said it's averaging roughly $700 a tree. When I was involved with some road, build, or road widening in West Brookfield, West Brookfield bid all the tree work for the road and it was less than half when, when if they did it by a day rate. By a what? By a daily rate. So they bid the whole trees for the whole road. And uh, the problem is if we break it out too much, it's a lot more work for the advertising, for the bid yeah. process. That, that's one of his concerns. Because initially I said, what about like 25 trees at a time? But he said they roughly did 76 trees less so far this year. I, I, a little more than that. I haven't gotten the exact total, but that was the number I was prepared to present at the annual meeting if I needed to, okay. and he's done some work since then. So. Okay. So, but he's thinking he has an extra 15000 this year that he didn't have last year. So well, I'm like, I had, I'm not sure, I, I had 50000 in the warrant, maybe fifty five. I was never actually clear on that. And uh, there was a $12,400 annual budget for last year. This year, um, at the town meeting, it was approved a $15,000 annual budget and another, I believe, 55000 in the warrant. Yeah. So, and then there'll be a little bit of rollover, not much from the last year's warrant. I, I came close, but I didn't spend it all. Okay. So, I know it's a little more work to do the paperwork, but I'd like to see we mark out 100 trees and we put it out to bid for all the trees rather than a daily rate. So what do you do if someone calls in a tree? I'm sorry? What, what if someone calls in a tree? Does it, how does that get handled? You mean if it's changed outside the 100 that are previously marked? Right, so you mark off one through 50, 50 through 100, and then I call up and say, hey, I got a problem with a tree here, can you get to it? How does that then get handled? And the, the other thing with that too is as trees are identified, say as a resident called in that I hadn't been made aware of yet, how do I prioritize now? Right. Like, do I want to spend money on trees that aren't as much of a, a risk as, as maybe one that came in like, like Brad mentioned? Because most likely someone calling in is going to have a higher sense of, I mean, they, it could potentially have a higher sense could, of urgency than what's on the could, list. Could it be could it be done as a as a as a two part package where you do you list say oh, I see fifty I or seventy five trees and then a, a second line in the contract that's for up to like ten ad hoc trees that I mean, I mean we could calls? I I will say this though too before I I do go over the work with the contractor prior to him going out and doing it and I do have a very good understanding of what can get accomplished in a day and I give him usually more than what can get accomplished in a day because things come up <laughs> there's cars in the way there's road construction so he can move on to the to the next the next tree what's available work to be done but I mean it's up to you guys I think it's, it's something we haven't tried before. I'd like to try it and see if Brookfield will be the benefit as a result of it. And, and Dennis, you're just looking for guidance from us on how you, how we want it to look as it goes out to bid? Or do well, you have well, recommendation? Well, ultimately, you, you all make the decision. I, I think it's going to be a little bit added work, but I'm, I'm fine with that. That's, if you think you can save money, maybe we, we should do it that way. I, Maybe I, it'll be a big flop. I don't know, but I think it's worth yeah. the try because okay. I've seen it work before. So. Okay. And what are you thinking? Fifty or seventy-five is a lot. Well, I was going to say I'm assuming we're grouping by geographic area. Well, I think we well, could mark the trees and throw well, sixty well, to seventy. Be careful. What do you mean by mark? Yeah, yeah. We don't. So one, we don't, we don't mark, mark the, the trees, trees because then everybody starts trying to 
guess which trees are coming down next. <laughs> yeah, I, I do try to mark them the okay. prior okay. to the contractor. Yeah. yeah, I don't want everything because yeah. then, so, then my phone starts ringing. When's so, my tree coming? So, out? Dennis, you you have the current list, right? Yeah. And so, one of the things that would probably make sense is if we could zone out the town, and like if you've got a list, how many trees you said are on your 200. list? You got yeah, like well, I don't have exactly 200, well, but I still haven't completed an inventory on every street yeah. in town. Okay, I know you haven't done 100% inventory, that's fine, yeah. but are, we're over 100? Yes. Oh, okay. Absolutely. So, oh, I, I, yeah. I, it's been over 100 as long as I've been here. Okay. Yeah. So, why don't we basically take a look at the geography of what makes sense and split out something that's somewhere between a 50 and, and like 80 tree lot. Okay. Okay. Send that out first. Right. Okay, and then get the rest of your inventory done, right? And then send once you get your inventory done, yeah. send a second lot out, even if they're not done with the first lot yet. And, and a fifty to eighty tree thing could probably be a good. It might be next year. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We did seventy six as of June sixth this year. Seventy six trees. So. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, we could break it up and then go year by year. Yeah. So, it's worth yeah. a try. And, and then that, and then that's right. not a lot of that's not a lot of extra burden, right? It's no. just you're going by a tree. You're just going by a tree count instead of going by a day daily work fee. Yeah. That's correct. So. But it, all right. So if we go by a tree count, are we going to just award this much for these many trees yep. and however long it takes you to get them done? Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's one of the things you put in the RFP, though, is that you want them done by by such some, such some date certain, right? Yeah. Okay. So even if you give them, so if and, and you've been in the in the industry yeah, a long time. You know, you know what's a reasonable amount of time to exactly. get that number of trees done, mm -hmm. right? So just use a date certain that's that plus maybe thirty days just to give a little slush a little for weather or yeah. other workload or what okay. have you. You know. Yeah. So. Sorry to create more work for you. Oh no, Dennis, it's, it's, but, it's uh, fine. Um, I think it's, I'm here to help the town. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the, the one other thing is that the dollar amount. And, you could probably better. Uh, I think anything over twenty-five thousand, we have to have a performance bond. Am I correct in that? I think it's fifty, but I could double check. Okay, so we we have to factor that in too. That yeah, and I, I'll get with you so we can. Yeah, I would say we can touch base right. maybe on Monday, and we can kind of dot our eyes, cross our T's, and get okay. everything ready. Sounds good. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I realized. So what did you want to do about employee training with autism? I mean, I literally spoke with her for all of 15 to 20 seconds uh, earlier today in the uh, uh, main lobby. And she, I said, I'll see you, see you tonight. And she said, no, nope, I'm not even coming. We're all set. What that means, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Why don't we table it and see? Let's table it. Yeah. You guys are job. both, uh, no, they're both, are you guys both on the beach committee? Is that what it is? Okay. Do you want to come up? So Jeff's next. You're next, Jeff. <laughs> South Palm Beach. Yep. Yeah. So a couple items on South Palm Beach. One is uh, part of our contract, which you have in the packets, we are allowed renourishment of the beach. Um, I've had this discussion with both Conservation Commission and Port of Health, uh, and they both are in a line that we should renourish the beach. Um, that we should? Should. Should. Yeah. Uh, so there's that part to this. And then the other part that I think is more important and critical is that uh, when the state, I don't know if you've been down there, they did a whole bunch of improvements with the boat ramp and guardrails and all that. Um, there's actually no handicap access to the beach. Uh, so I've been in touch with uh, Senator Durant's office about seeing about the state giving us permission to kind of re-nourish the beach and also um, address some of the concerns with the handicap access. I guess I'm confused how we're going to 
get handicap access on the beach? How are we going to wheel a wheelchair, or is that is, are we talking yeah. about so I wheelchairs can, or how? Yeah, wheelchairs or anything like okay. that. And there's a couple letters from people about yeah. being able to go down there. Yeah. If you look at the beach, there was kind of a trail. Yeah. Whether it's at the right grade or anything like that, you might be able to kind of. I remember. Uh, I think on the I think on the report the grade was a little steep. Yeah. But. I think the challenge is that that I'm Same. not sure we own that access. That's right. Right. So we have to get permission to. Either that, or we can ask for forgiveness. <laughs> right. I mean, one, one one of the agencies that works or, or is responsible for the whole thing should be pushing that. And then if they say, well, you know, help us with it, then we would do that under contract. But at this point. The, I don't know if it's the Fish and Wildlife or the other. Or the it's Fish and Wildlife. They, they don't want to do, do anything. So that was more uh, the issue because when they put the floating ramp for the, for the boat uh, situation there, that blocked people who normally would just walk down the ramp and then go around you know, if they, you know, with a walker wheelchair or whatever. Now they can't do that. So that's really the issue. You know the great construction, whatever renovation that was great, but they didn't think about the handicapped access when they did that. So um, the beach committee has sort of been the last two or three years fighting an uphill battle on that. That's one issue, and the only thing I can see is with with Brad's help in the last several months. You know maybe you know one of the state center or the state representative would put something in there as far as trying to do a land stop. I know Don has been working on that for years. And what Fish and Wildlife has said, no, we don't even want to touch it. So um, the only other thing we can do, basically, is to, uh, as as a town, say we would like to get handicapped accessibility here, and then lobby whoever the handicap accessible state department is to talk to Fish and Wildlife to say, you know, let us do this, please, because they have the money to do it. They do it all over the, the state. Uh, it's just we're, we're, we don't have a sort of a unified voice and, and that's why I appreciate, or at least we appreciate on the committee. We, have, we used to have five members and now we have four, but Brad is, is uh, sort of taking it upon himself, I think, and Kelly had some input prior, but it has to be at that level to sort of push the state to do, do something, basically. So do you have a plan of how you would like to proceed down there? Or? How it's, it's it, constructed it, or no no it's 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 not our property so we don't I have any it, plan all, all i've done is I've, I've talked to highway two years ago and they said it's probably a thirty five thousand dollar project but again it's not our property we don't know what the guidelines are that was just sort of a wild whatever wild guess um and i know that our grant writer had a you know tried to apply for grants and said well you don't own the property you can't get a grant so that's we're sort of going in a circle so between ron and, and brad hopefully can keep pushing we'll provide logistics whatever we can to try to move that i think it's a longer term project the other issue which which we had was um the refurbishment which is identified as just one li two little words in the contract that uh the wildlife fish and wildlife um as the town the selectmen sign every year we operate under that contract um, there's no guidelines as far as what they mean by refurbishment. When we went, Brad and I went before the Conservation Committee, when was that, two, two weeks ago? Yeah. Um, one of the gentlemen pulled up a whole long list of things that have to be done uh, as far as refurbishment. You need DEP approval and stuff like that. There's a whole, whole yeah category of stuff plus he was talking about these little um, they look like worms where you fill them with stuff and then they put them along the beach so that the, the, the sand doesn't run off into the into the pond I'm not sure what they call it but I've yeah. seen them around Th that could be possible but until we get guidance since we don't own it from wildlife or someone in the state as far as how to refurbish it we're sort of at a standstill because before I mean I think uh, Tim Cummins volunteered um, sand and we just this is before my time it just dumped it on the beach and no one said anything and now it's become more 
politicized whatever. So we, well, we, just, we also had one year where somebody committed to donating the sand and something went sideways and then it just didn't happen. So. Um, right, but I mean, once once you once you raise the visibility, it's like now we have to do everything by the book. I think, right? Because if someone we start doing something and the state says, "Oh no, you can't do it that way," then we've just wasted a lot of time and effort. So I mean, I think we have to follow whatever the process is. I'm just trying to outline, and I think we've got conservation commission, board of health, selectmen, and our townsfolk. We have Sherry Zitter here who, who lives next to the to the beach wants to use it, can't, and, and so I think we have a groundswell moving in the right direction. And I just basically wanted to, um, you know, notify everyone that, that we're, we're trying to work on it, but I really think we need, um, and I know Kelly worked on it, and I know Brad has worked on it, but just continue to keep it a, on a priority list as far as trying to, trying to push things as best as possible and keep us informed so that we can you know, we have to go lobby someone in, in Boston, you know, fine. But again, we're not quite sure how to how to do that or, you know, what impact it would, would have. Have you spoken to Terry Smith? No. He's the engineer that actually does the work. He did the work at South Pond for the parking lot. And I would suggest we start with him. Okay. He works you know for him? fishery. I do. He works for fisheries and wildlife. Did you meet him, Don, while he was working there? Yes, Terry, Terry Smith is the voter access uh, from Fish and Wildlife. He's a good guy. He designed the boat ramp and uh, was an instrumental in, in the beach construction as well. Uh, It'd be a good one to start with, though, wouldn't it? Yeah. So I believe the agreement says renourishment, not refurbish. Renourishment, renourishment is very simple it's adding sand uh, so I don't believe there's any environmental issues if you if your conservation is willing and the Board of Health is willing to and it's in it's in the agreement I don't think there's any big yeah. issue it's in, if, it, so, it is so the agreement, isn't years it? ago I years ago I made an agreement with uh, escape estates they were willing to provide sand at no cost uh, and deliver it and dump it to the beach and we had a piece of equipment which would spread it out. As Brad mentioned, with the, with the construction of the handicap boat ramp uh, float, we now can't get access to the beach. There's no way to get a piece of equipment down there other than maybe taking the, the parking uh, fence yeah, down, down so that you could get to it. You could, you could do that. You'd have to ask the state for permission uh, because it is their, is their Thanks. beach. Yeah. Okay. One of one of the other issues that we have talked about in the past, and that is making a land swap, which I brought up to them, and right, and assume. that was shot down. Um, well, it's got to be five years ago now. Uh, actually, I met with uh, Terry and the director gave you the director's name of uh, Todd Olanik, Olanik, I believe yeah, it is. Right. And basically they said, nope, we're not interested. Uh, if you were to make a land swap, the beach, which is state property, and give the state the canoe launch, which is town property, it's a one-for-one -one swap, you would own the beach, you could, you could then uh, manage the beach the way you would like and spend money on it. And with the work down there, I mean, I don't know what the use, what the rules are with using volunteers to do it, or do we test highway to do it, or? We, we can, either is perfectly acceptable, so. Free um, is for me. What's that? <laughs> Free is for me. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the, the big thing again that I that I'm concerned about is that when we did talk to the conservation commission, because I know nothing about all that stuff, but this this gentleman whose name escapes me, he's a new member of the of the board there. Bill Meeker. He he was talking about how it has to be 
uh, number one has this this so that the, the sand doesn't slip into the water and then talking about um, raking the beach every day and I said no we're not we're not going to be able to do rake the beach every day and he said well that's what it says right here and, I, and so at that point I just well, said, I think that okay I, I'm, yeah. I'm just I'm backing up and if the state wants to tell us what they mean by replenishment, renourishment, whatever, and on the guidelines, and we'll do it. Otherwise, you know, I don't want to waste time in doing something that's not going to be the right uh, thing. Oh, and Sherry just gave me the, the Mass Office on Disability, so probably that's a good number to stop. I'm going to, I'm going to call them next week. And uh, so, you know, we'll just have to see how it goes. So but, I don't know what action we want to do, if any, tonight. I just really want to. Well, I'm Bring thinking. To the forefront. I'm thinking if you're willing to do some more work, I'm, I'm going to keep work. pushing, but I want to make sure to that we're when you have some progress. That, that we're all. That we're all yeah. Yeah, I think, and, I think and, we're but, but it's basically Ron and and Brad or whomever is signing the contract for the the beach this year. That's the the, the, the point where we can push a little bit and say, hey, look, we want to do this. It says here renourishment. Do you have any guidelines? You know, we really like to do the you know the handicapped accessible. Who do you think we should talk to? It's a perfect point of contact. We have once a year that they'll actually listen to us, even though it takes us two months for them to sign the thing. You know, we always get it in July, and the, the beach opens in whatever it's year to year, June to June. I'm going to get you Terry Smith's phone number as well, so you can talk to Terry. Yeah. Terry's is on that envelope that I gave you. Okay. Yeah, but but again, it's just a question of who can make a decision at the wildlife because we've been getting, you know, the land swap didn't work, the wildlife don't want to do anything than, than what they're doing. So I don't know how to move it. That's why I'm, well, I'm Todd, coming here to you guys and saying, hey. Let Todd, if the, the, Todd is willing to allow us to do the work, well, then that would be a good step. Just simply ask him. He's saying, when I met with him over at Beaver Dam, he wasn't willing to do anything there. So I'm sure he doesn't have the funds to do anything at South Pond, but maybe he wouldn't be to us doing the work if it didn't come out of anything to do with their budget. It seems like their budget is the issue. Oh, I mean, as far as for the handicap accessibility? Right, no, I'm, I'm sure it's yeah, some I other mean, other agency right that now, would do that. For the yeah. handicap accessibility, there's two, they're not Jersey barriers, but they're kind of like Jersey barriers that would need to move to even get access down there um, and even get equipment down there. I don't know if you want to check it out. And sure. I, I, I believe that <coughs> Terry Smith's part of the voter access group, whereas Todd is the regional director, and Todd was the one that actually worked with the selectmen on, on the annual agreement. So it was Todd. Terry, Terry basically ends his responsibility at the vote ramp, I okay. believe. But Todd, who's the regional director, he was the one that Punk and I talked with. Okay. All right. So, so are you, you, as the chairman, are you signing the contract this year? We haven't uh, received er, er, it. Have we you received it yet or no? no? Yeah, we, we don't even have the new contract. We don't have the I think we, we don't need, have I think, the I think we, that's we one of the things 24. we should take as an action is to follow up with them about where's the, this. Yeah. Right, because that, that's your one point of leverage to say, well, we're not going to sign the contract unless you talk to us, and, and these are the things we want to talk about. Yeah. You know? And, and, and well, you could that, also that's, say that, then there's no contract, so get off our property. <laughs> well, it'd just be a good way to start. Well, yeah. just start the process. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're, you're a politician, so yeah. you know how to use leverage better than I do. I'm, I'm just sort of bringing yeah. it to, to everyone's attention because we started, when was I mean, you've started been forever, but. It was like four or five years ago when, when we didn't even have a South Pond Beach Committee and Beth and, and Clarence got together a, a bunch of people who were well, interested. The rent, committee, we got, the rent Committee originally, that was part of their purview and the beach funds were in there, yeah. in with the Rent Committee. And and their focus was on Lewis Field right. and not on the beach, so that's when the Beach Committee. And then Hung talked with them about uh, charging for the beach and then we got into that whole discussion about how we could do that as well. Right, because I mean the, the original genesis of the beach committee was as Don said, but also because there was some rumor that the Department of Fish and Wildlife did not want to have a, 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 a beach but only just fishing and they were just going to do away with the beach and that's when 
I think Beth stepped in with Clarence and you got the group of people together. It was, That's why it we was, started it. was it. mostly Clarence, but yeah, they, they, they were looking at just letting the beach go and we agreed that that was not the right direction right. to go for the town. Right, otherwise, you know, I wouldn't have known anything about it. Or yeah. else my wife heard about it, and that's what's been the driver uh, <laughs> to get me where, where we are now. So, yeah. All right. So, thank you for listening. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, geez. Okay. Oh, I left the stamp? Yeah. Oops. And I hope he has the copies. <laughs> For, for the easement. I gave them to him and I told him to bring back the copies. Oh, no. He probably should have had Chris do it. Right, right, right huh? Wanna, I don't think he's here anymore. You want to no, text him? Close. Yeah. Think, oh, no. It got, it got notarized. Yeah, it's all set. Yeah. It's just, we don't know if we have the copies. No, Mike was supposed to bring the copies back. You didn't have anything. You weren't on the agenda for anything, were you? You weren't on the agenda for anything, were you? No. Uh, I didn't want to make you sit there and wait if you had something else. No, I was. I was. Uh, you basically. I don't want to do passcodes. Trying to go right to the sewer and yep. go right down the line. Yeah. So, town sewer, North Brookfield had approached me. Uh, they're going through a big infrastructure upgrade with their uh, water treatment facility and uh, reached out about seeing if we're interested in tapping into them uh, for town sewer and I said well I'll bring it to the select board um, there's a study that was emailed or given yeah, to you packet, yeah. um, so this was packet. something once explored by Brookfield back in 2000 and um, we have more studies related to sewer than right. shake a stick at right so i just exactly just that do we want to have a discussion about it is this something we want to give over to board of health to board of health is the one that was in charge of the sewer extension study before yeah mr chair one of the things I think it's going to be uh, imperative for the town to be able to sign on to the state revolving fund. Yeah. Um, one, I don't know how that's funded currently. Uh, I know in my previous life we had utilized that for a couple sewer expansions and it was at zero interest rate. I don't believe that's the case anymore. So I could certainly do some investigating, at least on the funding side, to what's see the, what's available. What's the name of that? It is the, oh boy, pollution abatement sewer revolving funds yeah and, and actually it's interesting that this is a proposal to potentially tie into North Brookfield it's one of the things that has restricted us in the past and that other studies have put us at a bad in a bad situation is that our discharge if we were to do it ourselves would generally go to the Quaybog because we're downstream of Spencer right <laughs> there's no there's no room there functionally for us to have any amount of discharge because they've been over their limit for I don't know how many years but it's it's more than years than you can stay, shake a stick at right so um, of the options this is the one that's got the highest likelihood of success functionally speaking unless we were looking at something that was kind of like a in place vertical sewerage treatment like what they've got in uh, uh, downtown Middlebury I know we just don't want if we get to a position as a town to have be required to build something like this we don't want it in our town right <laughs> right and we don't have any good place to put it right and some of the stuff in this study I mean the two big things that jumped out at me in the study was the houses around the lakes um, were a potential issue that were cited and then also the houses in the village district um, over time 
as you probably no know, place it, to go. It could, right? If something happens to a septic and they fail Title V and they can't park that land for whatever reason, they're up the creek and well, you know, not necessarily because any septic system where there's a house, the state gives credits and special allowances for an existing septic system or an existing home. They can take all kinds of variances and frankly with the new technology we're just taking this septic system out that's there and putting a new one in and they last lasting 30 years so I don't necessarily see the need for the cost of this unless it was all grants because functionally the septic system although you pay for it initially probably pay the same amount in town sewer fees over the next 30 years so so, but, so that's so true it but, it, but it has but even though this study was done presuming it's all residential one of the things that has hampered our growth as a community is the lack of sewerage from a standpoint of getting being an appealing place for business for commercial retail anything that would expand our base beyond residential you're right for the state that we're in for the configuration of the town that we're in we could probably get by forever especially with increasing technology what we can't do necessarily and and it may be a conscious decision not to be able to do it is to be able to have industrial commercial areas that are able to be serviced by sewerage the problem with it is we don't have a vast amount of area that's undeveloped we don't have Basically, we don't have any area that's undeveloped to then bring in business or industrial. It's very, it's very limited. Well, well first of all, we've got Gavit. We've got Gavit. <laughs> that's okay. the one building. Okay, that's w that's one, the one big building yeah. and one big plot of land. Yeah. We've got a number of spaces up North Brookfield Road that would be eligible for higher density development. I know that there was one area in particular that Clarence was looking at potentially for seeing, trying to convince some external entity to come in and do senior housing in that in the space. Um, Sent, that's been since sold, but okay. but but you understand. I mean, but, there's, there's yeah. So my there's, my thought is there's very there's very little opportunity for the industrial, very little for the multi-family residential but I mean the potential well, there's always the, if you if you have the sewers there's always the opportunity for redevelopment right Possibly. so yeah. you know I, no, I, I get it I don't want to yeah. just close the door and I'm not yeah. suggesting that but I just know the cost uh, unless we were able to get a grant to move forward I don't even know how we would begin to move forward to raise an well, and, and, I, and I'm not advocating that we do it from raising appropriate and I yeah, don't disagree I, I, no. I don't disagree that we need grant support I just I want to be careful when we say it would need to be like a hundred percent grant funded because every grant comes with a community match and right. people are aware right. of that right now some of them are only a 10 percent match and some of them are a 50 50 right. match and, right. and I agree maybe even a 50 50 match given the cost of putting in sewerage systems even the tie into an existing one even if you're not paying for the plant right because what we're talking about here by tying into north brookfield you have the expense of the system but well, not the, the expense piping of and the pumping processing right, right? right. you've got piping and pumping but you don't have processing mm -hmm. which is a totally different level of cost it's probably 20 percent of the of, actual of the pipe. action right yeah, you're right you know so um you know and being a secondary system like that we could even consider doing what they do out in the midwest which is there's um oh shoot what is the name of them they have a different style that's almost like a hybrid between like full sewerage and like the, the septic system and i can never remember the name of it so you're gonna have to forgive me it's not my business and i researched where, it like years where ago you, uh, like where you uh where you just where you grind it first? what you're saying is yeah. where you discharge the effluent is that what you're yeah, talking I think about so, yeah, yeah. so so spencer is large and they discharge they have to clean up the sewage to a certain degree to discharge it to no the bottom, no it, right? no it's but different it's it's the way it comes off the property i'll, I'll bring the information okay. to a future meeting right. or send it out so that you can y'all can see it but so functionally you wanted to bring this to the table because north brookfield made enough expressed an interest in having us tie in right now the reality is this isn't something that's going to happen, obviously, anytime soon for a myriad of reasons. But one of the big reasons is 
they're going to be paving over Route 9. And once that is paved over, which I believe is going to be this year, we're not going to be able to open up the road anyways. But this is going to be a long process. So It would take us three to five years. <coughs> right. Anyway. Right. Right. Now, one thing we can do, though, if the state's planning on paving Route 9, and it's maybe something that's worth the investment, if we know what we would need to traverse Route 9, we could ask to get that incorporated into the Route 9 paving project the same way, even though they got it wrong, okay? So when they did the bridge project, they got it wrong, and it doesn't line up so you could do it, but the original intent was that they had, there was supposed to be a pass-through in the bridge to allow water service south of the river, okay? And from what I understand, they, they, they hosed it up somehow with regards to how it was designed. Um, but is, do we have a, do we still have an opportunity with the Route 9 paving to incorporate into the Route 9 paving a pathway to do this, even if we're five years away from that? I'm not sure. I think we need a ton more information. <coughs> I, I, I don't. Well, I, yeah, but I, I, think, I think it may be something that we can at least ask the question, and if we can get with the North Brook. So do we, want, do we want to get some, either the select board or the sewer people here for a meeting and yeah. have a, have yeah. a meeting I with them? I think we do. I think okay. we need a joint meeting because yeah. because if they can give us enough information, we can at least approach the state and say, hey. And they can talk about how they've been financing it and funding it. Right, exactly. I think that'd be a great idea. Let's talk. Because I know let's get the upgrade about they're it. doing is $20 million. Yeah, it's really yeah. yeah. So, uh -huh. let's, so let's, let's, let's talk to them about it. Let's get smarter. It doesn't cost us anything to get smarter. I'm good with that. It might cost us in the future if we get smarter. Do <laughs> you want to handle number five? Or? Yep. That's a quick one. One day pouring permit. Motion to approve the one day pouring permit. Second. All in favor? Aye. Sign this. Okay. There's three lines, I would assume so. Yeah, I would assume so. Okay. Or I can take that back and because I'm just gonna I'm gonna give you this whole thing to give to Karen on Monday. Okay. <laughs> that works. Actually Karen is off next week. Oh. Yeah. Then I'll dump it on Lois. <laughs> <laughs> All right. South Palm Beach, we took care of. We can kind of pass this over. I put in town hall estimates and upgrades. I know during the town meeting we were talking about trying to just get an idea of what we want to do. Um, I think we can probably table it because I know we also want to get going on. Um, forecasting and capital projects, capital planning. Maybe that this be deferred to that conversation? Yeah. Okay. You good with that? Yes, I am. Uh, Brookfield Master Plan of Approval. Did you guys happen to? I got the packet, but yeah. I have not had an opportunity to go through the whole thing. It's quite extensive. Did you look at it at all? I glanced. So, do you know if we have to have this approved by the end of this year? We, we did receive a quote unquote completed invoice right. um, for $3,800 or so up or so. Um, they have a bunch of edits they're working on. If you look through here, there's a ton of typos and okay. stuff like that. Um, those planning board yeah, and looked at them. And I think it comes down to are there material changes that are needed. No. If it's just typos, yeah. then the the board can I guess, qualify their uh, their acceptance of it. Um, and frankly, in, once again, in my previous life, this, the state really wasn't that concerned about making sure all the grammar and the spelling was absolutely correct. They're more concerned at the 30,000 foot level and with any material changes that were so I think we have a significant amount of latitude to, to approve if we agree with the, the substance of the uh, master plan. Okay. 
So why don't we table it for the next sure. meeting? Table it. with that. Okay. West Brookfield Road site visit from June 3rd. Uh, up by me, Gene Lytle's house has been getting flooded. The bus company's been getting flooded. The road's been washing away. Uh, Rich and I met with Todd Atlantic from uh, Fish and Wildlife to talk about mitigating some of the issues. Uh, the big issue tends to happen in the winter when the water flows down Gene's driveway into the road because it just turns to ice all winter long. Uh, we did, the uh, Todd basically mentioned that he was going to um, compromise with us and he was gonna do some things and we were gonna do some things, Ron was there as well. And he was gonna breach the dam. He was gonna trap the beavers, as any of it happened. They've reneged on all of it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was agreed to at the site, during the site visit, but then when it went, I guess, up higher in the food chain, they said they were not denied. touching any of it. The flow meter, that's anyone that's being affected, they can pay to fix that. That's not on them, that's not their responsibility. <laughs> well, what we've been quoted to in several emails at this point is. It, even though the source of the impoundment is on their lands and it's causing issues for other abutters, uh, the town included with the road, we have permission to fix their problem because legally they're not responsible for it. Frankly, that just doesn't make sense right. that the, they're the source of the problem and it's up to us as well, the victims to, to fix it. What makes it. sense to me is they probably have hundreds of those issues throughout the state Absolutely. and if they touch one, they're gonna touch all of them. So so how do you wanna move forward with it knowing that they're not gonna do anything? What's the best course of action? I, I, think, I think we're kinda at a safe spot right now where the water's down considerably yeah. from the spring. We're but, big right now. But this is gonna come up again maybe in the fall with the fall rains or certainly in the spring. So what's the best course of action? Uh, maybe we get the abutters to, I know Howard Whitcomb is trapped near 100 beavers that have threatened his well over the last 15, 20 years. Do the residents of, of that area then just take it upon them? Uh, I don't know that we can go on state property and pay that as a town we do, then that opens I, us up I to really feel doing like it all over town as well. Yeah. I feel like it's their problem. <laughs> so, I, I think who, that whose problem? The states. I yeah, mean, no, I, I yeah. would agree. Yeah. I know if my property was causing my neighbor problem, I'm pretty sure I, I would have to do something about it. Right. So. And why this doesn't happen in this case is... I think because of the magnitude of the state and, and the dams throughout. So what are our options? I mean, do we have KP threaten the state? Is that our option? I, I mean, it, one scenario obviously is they've given us permission to remediate the issue. The problem is if we go on to their land, if we start to destroy and demolish the beaver dam, we don't have expertise in it, and Pete, the, that highway has indicated he doesn't, he, want, to do he doesn't yeah. want to touch it because if you do it incorrectly, that whole dam could let go, and now we're having a few acres of water now pouring out of there. Who knows how much damage that caused? And the guess good, who's the good problem. The good problem there is it's small in comparison to the one that let go last year that wiped out the field at Tantasqua that happened on Schoolhouse Crossroad, right? So. This one's pretty small compared to that one. We didn't lose the road. The water raised so high at the football field, it, it started to damage the turf, but it didn't wipe out the road. It didn't wipe out the culverts. And though this is a nuisance, I don't think it, it's risen to the level that we have to worry about losing a road. So what, what's the cost of bringing a professional that actually knows what they're doing? Pretty, it's pretty low cost, but it's a recurring cost. I think it's roughly 125 bucks 
bird beaver they trap. So sometimes it's a couple of beavers and, and, it, and it rids the problem for months and sometimes it's six or eight that it's a whole family that it might rid the problem for only six months because then a new family comes down and says this is a great spot to be, right? So it's a reoccurring problem and that's why Howard Whitcomb has trapped near a hundred of them that he's paid for on his own with no help. So, so if, if the town were to accept the responsibility of, of mitigating the, the uh, beaver dam, we'd be paying for the quote-unquote expert to remove the, the dam, and then we'd also be paying for, for the actual trapping itself with absolutely no guarantees, as Richard indicated, that next fall or next spring they we're in the back. same boat. Can we, go well, to, can we go to Bertha Hume's office? And I know they we get, have. That, well, yeah. so I want to take a slightly different approach, yeah. though. I don't think we can expect the state to act, but can we do a survey of how many of these issues we have coming off of state lands and try to do the same thing that we did with the police station insulation and ask them to get it on a bill? Like get us compensation to deal with our problem? I mean, if you think about it, the whole beaver problem started when the state changed the trapping laws and, and basically that occurred in Boston that's where the population is heavy and it affected us in the rural areas yeah so, so maybe it needs to go back on the ballot for right but well, i don't well, know that. well what i'm saying is that I, I don't know that we can change the state law and i don't know that we can change the state regulations and i don't know that we can change the behavior of the state departments but we can ask them for some money to compensate sure. us for the fact that they've got a problem they're not willing to deal with well they got this flow device that's there that just hasn't been maintained that they totally forgot about until i brought it up to them it just needs to be maintained and if that worked and was functional well like you said the beavers the beavers are smart right yeah. so they they will hit that flow device and sometimes it'll work for a few weeks a few months but eventually they pick it out and, and, and plug and them up and the problem is that you got that flow meter and the tube that runs from it probably only runs 20 feet past the beaver dam so they can hear it and they just block it up it needs and they even it admitted it, it needs to be extended but they don't want to touch it now because it's I not, make a motion not, we have Brad call <laughs> Berthium's office and, and work see back what he them. can do to get us some help yeah well get us some money and yeah. we'll help help ourselves yeah. get, they gave us permission to do what we want on their property yeah. we already have permission right yep, we but do. we need to I mean, not spend our money right so let's go back to birth team's office and say hey we have permission to go take care of this but it doesn't make any sense for our townspeople to be the ones and i mean i don't want to pay legal bills but i mean is there anything that well, let's start by just asking just, yeah. let's, just, right. let's start by just asking the state for the money yeah give, give it you gave us permission now give us the money to go deal with your problem. Yeah. And we'll do the project management. I mean, unfortunately, I don't think anyone's going to prioritize it right now only because we have the water levels low. Yeah. No, but we can put it on the honey right. do list. Right. And we can basically say that it's going to be willing, a reoccurring we're, we're, problem. We're willing, we're willing to contribute project management and they're, they're, skills to it. They're aware. Just I've, need I've given them all these email chains already. Yep. There's, they are looking up at it. Yeah. Um, oh, KB? No. Um, it's worth it. Worth it. Okay. Yeah, so just tell them. Actually, Birthday Mandarin's yeah. office. Yeah, just, just, yeah, just tell them, you know what? Fine. You gave us permission. Just give us yeah. the funding and we'll project manage it. Yeah. We'll take care of it. You're too busy. We get it. <laughs> State's too busy. Give us yeah. some money. We'll, we'll, we'll take care of it. Start with three to five grand and we'll see where that goes. Yeah. All right. <sighs> Next on the docket open meeting log complaints, John David Holcroft. Uh, in your packet, you should see, I guess, my, my proposed response for the May 30th, which is the open meeting law uh, complaint regarding the agenda items, uh, not being specific enough. Basically, with this, I mean, Mr. Holcraft's complaint is, in, in my mind, 100% accurate. We did not. Um, we, we, in fact, used abbreviations and acronyms in, in the agenda, and I think we're all aware of it 
now after the fact that yeah we did do it and at this point i i mean i'm certainly as guilty as anyone i saw it dawned on us as we yeah. were actually it, it came up right, as a yeah. comment right yeah, i right. mean i brought up the fact that we had just gone through saying that that wasn't adequate right. and but it did right. register with me before so i think we rectified the issue right and now we don't intend to do it again yeah correct right. no because more acronyms yeah, so the, the way we're going to do it procedurally is Karen, as usual, will actually type up the agenda. I will actually approve it. And then the chair, in this case, obviously, Brad, will have a final look at it. So we're going to have sure. several sets of eyes looking at it to make sure it doesn't slip through the cracks. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so at this point, then, I would ask the board to authorize uh, myself as town administrator to endorse. I'll make a motion that... Uh, Mr. Aponte endorse the letter as written and uh, provide a copy to Mr. Holcraft. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so I can. Public access. I think this is something that you want on there? Yeah. You know, with the amount that we still have left, I, I'd, I'd like to table that if you're good with that until our next meeting or how do you want to handle it about just so we can that. we're not here till an unreasonable hour uh end of year transfers we have a couple end of year transfers we'll make a motion that we approve uh transfer from tax collector clerk to tax collector expense of fourteen hundred dollars second all in favor aye aye and then uh, I make the motion that we approve the transfers from accountant expense to gas inspector wages, um, to accountant expense to uh, I have no idea what cemetery super cemetery superintendent, superintendent yeah. wages. Thank you. Uh, S and I wages. Snow to and ice. Yeah. Snow and ice expense. Uh, account expense to town clerk assistant wages, and then account accounting expenses to election wages. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll make a motion that we accept uh, uh, Officer Angelica Rodriguez's uh, resignation with regrets. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Move Veterans War Memorial from second floor to first floor. So while I was do going door to door campaigning to the selectmen, I had one uh, vet ask me about moving the names from the second floor to the first floor, and I thought that would be a great idea. Uh, he has several relatives that are on that list, and uh, I thought I would be willing to do the work to move the move it downstairs and put it on the wall over here so that people that are coming into town hall on a regular basis or the, the, the upstairs is used so infrequently and, and people can access it but it's very seldom so I would like to see those list of names put downstairs where they would be noticed. I'm cool with that. Yeah, I don't have any objection to it. So, are you making that motion? That the yes, motion? that's my motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Signing off on warrants. Uh, vote to have Ron sign the warrants. Motion to have Ron sign the warrants. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, that didn't take long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, declare special municipal positions. I think we did have several, but I think we're just going to stick yep, we're, on. We're just doing the one. Um, uh, Town Clerk Siri had found a document literally from around 2005 in which several positions, I'd say upwards of 20 or so positions, were mentioned as being declared but we can't find it right now in the uh, minutes. So at this point, we don't know if the document actually made it to action. Uh, so we're checking on that. And frankly, there's only one that's of a kind of an urgent uh, nature, yeah. and that's for- We can do them as we sort it out. 
Excuse me? I said we can, we can add to this as we absolutely, sort them out. Absolutely, absolutely. And so. the, um, with, with Jacob, he just needs to be declared a special municipal, or not he, but uh, the position of the cable studio project or coordinator to become a special municipal employee because obviously he's working on IT and he wants to work, I guess, other than an spaces. interim basis. Yep. So as such, by law, we have to declare that position as okay. a special municipal employee. So I'll make a motion that we appoint Jacob as a special municipal employee for the cable access. <laughs> no. No. Actually, there, there should oh. be in your packet, there should be a, no, a preferred a motion. motion. Oh, okay, here it is. I move to make the following position a special municipal employee position as allowed by Mass General Law, Chapter 268A. Brookfield Cable Studio co Coordinator. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All set. <laughs> Fiscal year 2025 appointments. Um, I believe these are all the new appointments for? Correct. The highlighted ones should be the ones. ones are yes. new. Karen has gone through meticulously <clears throat> to ensure that the folks that have two or three year terms are not included on that list. So everything there should be someone in need of an appointment for July. And there's month. Some well, there's several one years. Correct. Yeah, there's okay. several one years and, and, and then there's And then I do have a question. We have a bunch where we've got entire boards that have the same time period that are typically rotational. I was going to ask about that because this is not how we usually do it. Yeah, yeah. so it's spread out normally, right? Well, yeah. I mean, typically, what will occur is that is that, like for instance, the advisory committee. It's a three-year mm -hmm. term, and we're currently it's five people. Two of them would be a three-year term. Two of them would be a two-year term, and one of them would be a one-year term. And then we would. Cycle it then like. then they would go into all three years after that or if they had previously been appointed for different time periods then it would already be staggered so right. it, it feels like that didn't happen with this or are we just that far behind and then I have a question on the last page when when did the over when did we put so yeah two things I noticed um, one is there's an assistant animal control officer. That's a new position altogether. They had sent. No, I mean not the assistant, the person. Yes. The person is someone new. Yes. Um, but my then, my question is the personnel board, the five members, right, the three Karen years. Also put on people to recreate the personnel board, which I it's thought fun. we were going to have a discussion about, but. Well, I, I would like to discuss it, but. I'm sorry. Yeah, Beth, go ahead. Beth, what did you say? I'm sorry. I was going to say we can discuss it. I mean, I mean, I don't know that we can. We didn't formally vote to Correct. dissolve the personnel board. So even though it was defunct, we don't really need to have a discussion to stand it back up again. Okay. It would just be a case of approving the appointments or not. Okay. So if somebody felt strongly that we didn't want a personnel board, they could vote against all the appointments. But. I uh, it was never formally dissolved, so it doesn't have to be formally stood up. I'm, I'm not necessarily against appointing a personnel board, but what I saw before, there were more employees on the personnel board than not employees, and I would rather see it the other way. I No, I believe what Karen told me is there's certain people that are always on it, like the treasurer. Treasurer is so, pretty yeah. much ex officio. Right. Okay. So, and, and not that I have a problem with the tax collector being on it, but I, so, and then, and then the water department, like, how is that? So we've got, it looks like we've got the treasurer who's ex officio. We've got one elected person, because we never transitioned that to being an appointed position, correct? I'm not sure how it was set up I before. I don't think we did. She's not appointed, she's elected still, correct? Oh, okay. Brenda. Yeah. yeah, no, so that's elected. Okay, so it's one elected, one appointed, and one citizen. That's how it's always been set up. Okay, okay, and well, that makes the sense. Treasurer so. As the so, and, 
And who's the fifth member? We don't have one right now. Okay. So, so if we get, so we could we could specify that we'll only fill that with a resident, and then it's basically, I mean, it's three to two fundamentally, but the yeah. treasurer has to be on there. So. Yeah. No, I, I guess now with clarification, I'm good with that. Okay. All right. Uh, that was my only other question. Uh, Jamie, Mc, as I'm looking here, Jamie McNeeny. Uh, he's going to be new. Yeah. He's replacing Bob Hall. That's right. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty well good so with do, it. So do we want to just make the one change to go ahead and, like, pick a couple of folks to just modify the term on the advisory with the understanding that we're not dissing anybody? It's just to make sure that there's a rotation? Or do we just put them all on for three years and be done with it? I'm good with the three years. Okay. I mean, there's been a lot of turnover, so someone may drop Turn and we right. get something right anyway. So oh, I'm, I, let, let's put them up for three years and hopefully they stay. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Okay, and then let's see here. So do we? Do you just want a motion as? Uh, as submitted, so I'll make a motion that we approve the appointments as submitted on the printed list. And if anybody wants a copy of the printed list, then you're welcome to it. I'll second that motion. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No, he doesn't have to sign these tonight because I don't think I did. We'll, no, we'll they wait. don't have to be signed tonight. He could take them home and bring them back. So I did yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah. You can go get a better right chance if I have a little time, they'll be legible. <laughs> legible is not yeah, required for signatures. If that was the case, there's a bunch of people whose enlistment yeah. documentation ain't worth the paper it's printed on. <laughs> All right. All right. Motion to approve the select board minutes for 418 24. 6324, 6624, 6124 as previously submitted to us via email. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sorry. And, and, uh, any items that were not reasonably anticipated? No. Okay, motion to adjourn. Perfect. Second. Yeah. Oh, that happened items. faster than I would have thought. Well, not we didn't get through. Did you want to like actually get a vote? Oh yeah, all in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> now it's a wrap. <coughs> Sorry. We, we did that. skip it. We ta we tabled it. Sorry. If you were waiting for that, we, we did skip it.